yield myself three minutes to address some of the, um, the charges I've heard. Number one, they're saying this is a jobs bill. A half a trillion dollars in tax increases creates jobs. The mandates, the taxes, that creates jobs. Others have been saying, well, this isn't going to pass the Senate and the president's not going to sign it, so why bother doing that? If that's the logic we take on every bill we bring to the floor, then we ought to just go home. We think it's important to define ourselves with our actions, and that's why we're acting. We think this law should be totally repealed, and that's why we're doing this. Let me speak to the fiscal house of cards that is represented by this law. Now, the m minority is saying this reduces the deficit. Just look at the letter from CBO to the Speaker Boehner. It reduces the deficit by $143 billion over eight years, 230 over 10. It does that if you manipulate the CBO. I've heard charges of Enron accounting. The only Enron accounting that's been employed here is the previous majority gave the CBO a bill full of smoke and mirrors and made them score that. Well, here's what the CBO says. If you take away the smoke and mirrors, if you take away the fact that there's $70 billion in Class Act premiums that are being double counted, $53 billion in Social Security taxes that are being double counted, $115 billion in new appropriations required to hire the bureaucracy that wasn't counted, $398 billion in Medicare cuts that are being double counted, and oh, let's not forget the fact that we're going to do the doctor fix, $208 billion that we just discounted and ignored. When you take away the smoke and the mirrors, this thing has a $701 billion deficit. Now, if you don't believe me when I say it that way, how about this way? The CBO says this raises the debt. Now, why, how is that different where they say, on the one hand, the bill lowers the deficit, but on the other hand, it raises the debt? Because when the CBO looks at whether or not a measure raises the debt, they can look at everything. They look at the interplay of all fiscal policies to determine its effects on the debt. When they score a particular bill and its effects on the deficit, they look at what you put in front of them. All the smoke, all the mirrors, the double counting, the non-counting, the discounting, and they give you that answer. So if this bill actually lowers the deficit, how on earth can it then increase the debt? You know why? Because you have to play a phony trick with all this double counting to do that. What does this bill ultimately do when you really look at it all? This bill blows a hole through the deficit. When you look at the first 10 years, this bill is a $1.4 trillion increase. That's because you have 10 years of tax increases and Medicare cuts to pay for six years of spending. But when you actually look at the full 10 years of implementation of this law, $2.6 trillion in spending. $2.6 trillion. Now, Mr. Speaker, let me just say this, as far as jobs and the effects of this health care bill. I had a very alarming conversation with a very large employer in Wisconsin not too long ago, a privately held company with thousands of employees. She takes good care of her employees. I yield myself an additional 20 seconds to say this. Gentleman, Dr. Fadden, 20 seconds. And she said to me, I believe it's my obligation to offer health insurance to my employees. But my two competitors, my publicly traded competitors, have already said they're dumping their employees. Instead of paying $17,000 a year for employee health care, they're going to pay a $2,000 fine. That's a $15,000 difference that her competitor will have as a competitive advantage against you. So what did she say? I have no choice. I'm dumping my employees in this exchange. And thousands of employers are making the same decision. This should be re repealed. And with that, I reserve the balance of my Gentlemen. time.